This laboratory is to measure the thermal efficiency of an internal combustion engine. There may be as many as 2 billion internal combustion engines in the world currently, so it's important to understand how these devices work and be able to analyse their performance. The aim of the video is twofold. Firstly, help you visualise the physical components of the system so that the handout makes more sense when you read it before doing the lab. And secondly, make you aware of the sights and in fact sounds that you should take note of when you do the experiment so that you understand what's going on inside the engine in a much richer way. The engine we will test is a petrol engine and part of a generator pack that generates electricity. It has the same components and general design as a car engine. The rate of power of the engine is 9 horsepower. For comparison, a 1.4 litre Volkswagen Golf engine without turbocharging would have a power output of around 80 horsepower. The biggest difference is that it has a single cylinder with one piston, unlike most family car engines which have four cylinders. You can see the position of this cylinder if we look at a steel picture of the engine removed from the generator. The arrow points to the top of the cylinder, which is known as the cylinder head. A cutaway shows a cylinder inside which the piston travels at an angle about 20 degrees above the horizontal. The piston, driven by the combusting fuel-air mixture, transmits force in a straight line along the cylinder and then the crank mechanism changes this to rotational motion of the shaft. The shaft is directly connected to the generator. You can see the generator, coloured blue, to the right of the engine cylinder. You will also notice that there is a blue wire coming from the cylinder head which is attached to a pressure transducer whose signal is displayed on an oscilloscope. It is really important to read the handout fully and be familiar with the four-stroke engine cycle. At the start of this cycle, fuel in the measuring burette is mixed with air that is drawn in through the air filter shown here. The fuel and air is mixed and a valve opens, allowing the mixture into the cylinder as the piston moves down. This is the intake stroke. And then the valve closes as the piston rises again and compresses the mixture, which is known as the compression stroke. The mixture is then ignited by a spark plug causing it to combust rapidly, forcing the piston back down and generating power in the power stroke. Then the piston rises up again, a second valve opens allowing the exhaust to leave the engine through a short section of pipe which is known as the exhaust manifold. The exhaust gas passes upwards through a longer pipe into an extractor hood. The exhaust gas temperature is measured by a thermocouple probe which is read on the display on the bench. The generator takes power from the engine and generates electricity, which is then used to power a selection of heaters and lights. By turning on and off these devices, we can vary the load on the engine. The electrical power output of the engine is measured by a watt meter. Although the load varies, the speed of the engine is kept at a constant 3000 RPM by an engine governor. The reason for this should be obvious when you consider that 3000 revs per minute is 50 revs per second, so the resulting electricity generated is 50 Hz AC which matches our main supply frequency. However, in practice as the engine labours at higher loads, the engine speed will dip below the design condition and you will both see and hear this when the engine is running. The engine is started, just like a car engine, by a starter motor connected to a battery. When the engine is running, it is important to observe the changes that occur at different loads. Heaters and lights can be turned on to place a load on the generator and thus on the engine. When you turn on one of these heaters, the first thing you will observe is the electrical power reading increases. As mentioned earlier, you can hear the pitch of the engine drop and observe the engine speed reading decrease. This reading comes from a tachometer connected to the drive shaft of the engine. At higher loads, to maintain a constant speed, the engine governor must allow more fuel into the cylinder for each power stroke so the rate of fuel being drawn from the burette can be seen to increase. The cylinder pressure reading displayed on the oscilloscope will also rise as temperature and pressure within the cylinder increase with more fuel being burnt on each stroke. Finally, exhaust gas temperature can be seen to increase as well and then decrease as the load is reduced again. Make sure you read the handout to fully understand why we take the measurements that we take to calculate the engine's efficiency. Thermal efficiency of the engine is a ratio of mechanical work output over the heat energy input. If we know the quantity of fuel burnt and the time this took, which we can measure through the burette, we can work out from known properties of the fuel the heat energy in. If we measure the electrical power output of the generator, Using the known efficiency of this generator and estimating some other losses, we can work backwards to infer the mechanical work output of the engine. These two numbers together give us efficiency. 
This efficiency is governed by two things. The second law of thermodynamics, which limits how much mechanical energy you can ever obtain from heat energy and losses in the system. When attending the lab, try to figure out what physical features of the engine and what performance characteristics of how it is run are most likely to influence this efficiency.